Hi, everyone. Welcome, and thanks for joining us for Stars of Franchising. Get ready for a roller coaster ride through the world of franchising as we bring you the best stories of inspiration and entrepreneurial grit and turning dreams into franchise realities. That's right, Vinny. From emerging to global brands, we'll chat with the genius minds behind the magic. All brought to you by the Tariq Fareed Franchise Institute at Babson College. I'm Ab. And I'm Vinny. Now, buckle up for some serious inspiration. So excited to have Christo Dimitriades here to share some experiences. Welcome, Christo. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure to be with you guys. Well, we're, we usually start, you know, Vinny and I do for our audience to really ask guests like you with so much great, wonderful experience, uh, not only franchising, but entrepreneurship, life and leadership to really start with your why and what caused you to do what you do, Christo. Uh, well, I, I've been in the franchise business for uh, over 30 plus years, been in business since I was 18 years old, uh, was started my first business when I was still in college. And uh, so I have uh, uh, been in business uh, throughout the world, represented in 18 different countries around the world. And I've been in the brand building business pretty much my entire business career. I just love to see businesses come out of the ground, uh, you know, entrepreneurs start a concept and, and, and see that concept to fruition and uh, it, it essentially um, achieve their their goals in life, which is ultimately to build a successful brand and and create uh, wealth for themselves and their and their families and and, and build a foundation for for great brands. Um, and so uh, we had the opportunity, both uh, my my partner uh, Heather Elrod and myself, uh, we came together a couple of years ago after wanting to put together a conscious capital growth for many many years. Um, essentially to help uh, franchise companies, specifically franchisors, in their effort to uh, scale their business and achieve success throughout their business. And a lot of franchisors establish a great brand, they create a, an incredible culture, and they get to a point where there is new a new requirement for management skill, for uh, for financial need um, and that takes a whole nother level of skill set and, and and so we hope to partner with those franchisors we do take investment in those franchisors and we look to help them avoid the, the land the landmines we've been there we know how tough it is to to make a payroll on a friday and uh, go through the the, the the aches and pains of growing your business and we hope to avoid the, the landmines and, and guide them in the right way, but ultimately help accelerate their growth. Wow. Wait, Christo, this is, this is great uh, because, uh, as you can imagine, uh, this is int interesting for me, uh, to me, because uh, in the area of marketing and sales, and then what you folks do when you talk about building brands, in different countries and i my first question maybe we could just start from there my first question would be uh when you look at the franchise world when it comes to building brands across different countries what are the basic what are the major challenges and how do you navigate those well you know the first thing that a franchise uh, a franchise company requires is obviously you need brand a, a great brand and a great brand uh, also means you need uh, great unit economics. For a franchisee to be successful, uh, the unit economics <clears throat> need to work. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, bringing a, the right franchisee into your business, that is a partnership. You're, mm -hmm. you're in partnership with that franchisee for 10 plus years. Mm -hmm. uh, you are em em emboldening them, you're entrusting them to continue the the, the growth of your brand and you're putting the brand and the essence of the brand in their hands. So I would say the first and foremost is make sure that you have your hands on the culture of the brand. Hmm. The culture of that brand is, is, is the essence of the brand. It's the soul of the brand. Hmm. You need to make sure that you have that brand uh, and you're able to export that, that culture and the, and the soul of that brand. In franchising, the most difficult or the most challenging, but also the most opportunistic 
uh, factor of franchising is the ability to export your brand, export your brand to other cities, other other towns, other other uh, regions, other cultures. Um, and so making sure you have the essence of the culture in place is uh, is certainly one of the bigger challenges, uh, not only in the franchise space, but any any business that is looking to expand their brand. Hmm. Thank you. <laughs> That's great stuff. Christo, given that you had an early start in entrepreneurship um, and, and then your career in franchising, I'm not sure the timing of if franchising was first, but let's just take a look at this idea that um, some people feel – uh, that franchising is an entrepreneurship, right? That uh, how can it be uh, entrepreneurial if you're taking a playbook or, or you know, you're 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 replicating someone else's idea? What do you think of that? Um, and can you talk a little bit about this intersection or that uh, perception? I think um, it pr it's probably one of the biggest misconceptions because honestly. You know they are so intertwined mm -hmm. whether you the whether you're on the franchise or side or you're on the franchisee side a a great franchisee is a, is entrepreneurial mm -hmm. uh, the the ability to start your own business and then grow your business whether you're then starting in uh, and growing into the french as a franchisor and bringing franchisees on that's you need an entrepreneurial spirit to be able to do that. But it, it, it goes both ways because from a franchisee perspective, yes, you know, the argument is, well, why don't you just start your own business? Well, great franchisees also recognize that uh, the ability to join an existing brand, a brand that they have passion for, a brand that they mm -hmm. can see has all the, 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 the buildings of success, that you can join a, a system where you can uh, bank on and enjoy the fruits of uh, further marketing and training and all the, 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 uh, the brand recognition that comes with being a, a franchisee, um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge benefit. And it's why we're seeing franchising for the last 30, 40 years, 50 years, franchising has always led the growth. Uh, specifically in the United States, but we are going to see that more so now than ever before. Hmm. Well, uh, Christos, let's uh, uh, move on to maybe if you can explain to us what, in your opinion, uh, the best franchisees do well, and also what do you think the best franchisors do well? Um, well... Um, I think that uh, from a franchisor perspective, as I as I mentioned earlier, uh, unit economics and culture are what drive your brand. You need to make sure that before you go into the franchise space, you have unit economics that your franchisee can benefit from. The franchisee success is a franchisor success. Hmm. Uh, I think you need to make sure you you develop and maintain the brand. That's the that's the the, the primary responsibility of the franchisor is to to maintain the brand and the brand essence. And franchise franchisors work to establish and 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 build the identity of the business. And they do that through advertising, through marketing, through training and support. Um, and then, you, you know, one of the responsibilities of the franchisor is to is to continuously expand and grow and make sure that you are establishing brand presence uh, throughout your region, throughout your make sure that you're creating brand presence for your franchisees throughout the system. Um, from a franchisee perspective, um, I think, you know, one of the one of the biggest misconceptions from a franchisee's perspective is that uh, going into the franchise business uh, you don't need to work your business you you know you're buying into a successful system i can I, you know put my money in and i put a manager in place and i'd never have to worry about it and that's uh, that's just not the case mm -hmm. franchisee uh, certainly and and we see and no matter what industry you're in no matter what sector in it, you're in the most successful franchisees understand that we are making an investment. We need an ROI on that investment. We need to manage our people. We need to manage our business. We need to work for our business. And those franchisees are always the most successful. Okay. Good <laughs> stuff. Christo, 
you know, given some of the brands you've worked on and, and this idea of scaling, love to explore maybe a, a little background on, on a brand or two most recently before your role now that some lessons learned and um, advice, let's just say, for for early stage franchise or brands that are looking to scale, but maybe share a story or two. Well, you know, uh, um, Ed, and you and I have spoken about this many times today, more so than ever, the the challenge and the opportunity for franchisors, franchisees, and pretty much any business mm -hmm. is the speed in which a sector and a business is changing. Technology has changed the world. Um, COVID, I would say, has accelerated that that emphasis, that need. Right. Uh, but I think today more than ever, and, and something we focus on very, very uh, dearly here at, at Conscious Capital with our, with our brand uh, leaders is to make sure that we are always in tune with the next steps mm -hmm. and make sure that we understand where the consumer's going. Because consumer, consumer needs, consumer habits are changing so rapidly uh, that you always need to be one step ahead of where that is. Right. And, you know, today, understanding what your what can actually be the curveball in your business. It's not always a competitor. Right. You know, and a perfect example of that is uh, let's you, you pick a pick a, a camera brand, Canon, Minolta, Kodak. These guys were in the, you know, selling cameras and were always looking at their competitor as to mm. how they create their innovation and how they stay one step ahead. And all of a sudden, you know, next minute, the iPhone right, right. literally took them out of business. And so it was another industry, another sector altogether that, that essentially came in and swept the industry aside. And most of them were not looking for that. Right. They had the eye on, on their own competitors rather than understanding where the curveball was going to come. Right. And so I think that that is the biggest challenge today. And I don't care what sector you're in. Mm -hmm. I don't care what industry you're in. I don't care what business you're in. It's understanding where the next wave is going to come. Hmm. And, um, you know, just to answer your question, we, we, we recently acquired uh, a, a juice business called Main Squeeze Juice Company out of Louisiana. Mm -hmm. um, really exciting brand. Uh, and we are growing that brand both organically and via acquisitive growth. Um, and the food business uh, is is one where I think we are going to have a revolution in terms of technology, technological improvement. And that is back of house and front of house. Right. There's going to be technology improvements that are going to change the way the consumer um, orders. Um, experiences and and achieves that that uh, overall product because technology is changing so quickly and you know that can be a threat yeah. but it is also an opportunity definitely and a lot of companies are looking at at that that threat in that it's going to eliminate a lot of labor um, yes but it is but it also creates a new labor force it mm -hmm. also creates new opportunity in the labor market mm -hmm. But it is going to create more efficiency. It is going to bring and help cost of goods and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, all of those factors that w in the food business you're dealing with every single day. Uh, Crystal, uh, when you look back all these years working uh, uh, in the franchise world and now as a capital provider to players in the industry, what would you consider your biggest uh, failure? Uh, and uh, what did you what did you learn from it? <laughs> That's a great question, Vinny. Um, I think, you know, uh, I think uh, a failure that we've all made in the past uh, is what, uh, spe specifically as a franchisor uh, is not having the ear and not having your foot uh, or your your uh, your hand close to the franchisee mm. because the franchisee is the one running the business mm. franchisee is the one that uh, touches the customer every single day and and i think that one of the big mistakes 
that we've all made in the past is is not um, allowing the franchisee to have a voice yeah, and have a sufficient enough voice hmm. uh, to help in change, in technology, in marketing, in the training aspect. Uh, and those businesses that, that, that really always are ahead of the game and always have a very good handle on their customer, um, always bring the franchisee into play and allow them to participate in some of the uh, the changes and the, the decisions that are needed to to maximize your business and the efficiency of your business. Wow. So I'd say that that's been a, a, an area that, you know, over time through experience, yeah. um, we've we've had to learn. OK. Well, and that points to, I think, Christo, something you said earlier on that, you know, importance and how vital it is to have a partnership, right? And have empathy yes. for your franchisees. I'll piggyback on that a little bit and follow your your thoughts and words and talk innovation, okay? And given all the change that's coming at us and, and as you state, the franchisees that are close to their customers in the market, you know, can you talk a little bit about how the franchise model itself can promote that innovation? And, and have you seen some of the best ideas in a brand come from franchisees? Oh, absolutely. Um, and, you know, just sticking with uh, the the QSR or the food industry, mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing tremendous uh, innovative change happening both uh, in the back of the house and, and by back of the house, I mean, um, you know, in the kitchen and everything around the kitchen and what that what that ultimately means. I think for, you know, in today's market and again, doesn't matter what industry you're in, the two biggest challenges that we have in today's world is labor and and cost of goods and and those two things affect not only the PL dramatically but also the balance sheet uh you know for a franchisee making sure that you have uh maximized the ability for them to have as low a capital outlay uh as possible improves their roi uh as they as they as they grow uh, but then also making sure that the PNL is maximized, and what you're seeing in the in the food space right now um, is tremendous uh, innovation in uh, mechanizing uh, the ability to uh, for a, a, a robot uh, with artificial intelligence uh, to have the ability to not only slice the tomatoes, slice the onions, prep the the, the vegetables. Put a patty on the on the grill. Understand the temperature of that patty, and then deliver a final product, which is going to, uh, you know, for a for a for a, a an owner, that's a huge uh, innovative change that reduces labor cost, um, that reduces error dramatically, uh, that reduces the time of of production, uh, and delivers a consistent product to the guest. Mm -hmm. Uh, from the front of house, you, you've seen already uh, McDonald's and many, many others have rolled out artificial intelligence in their point of sale, uh, where you're able to now, you know, walk into a, into a restaurant and the, the, the point of sale recognizes you instantaneously mm -hmm. through via facial recognition and is able to uh, remember your, the last order you placed. Mm -hmm. um, it will automatically bring it up. Hey, Ab, uh, welcome back. Uh, you know, your last order, you ordered a double cheeseburger and a strawberry shake. Would you like to repeat the order? Right. And, you know, a simple yes uh, sends the message straight through to the kitchen. It's already got your your uh, your uh, credit card details on file. Mm -hmm. And away you go. You haven't yet even seen anybody yeah. up front or spoken to anybody um, so imagine the speed of right. ability to move through the line in that instance and and then have the robotics in the back preparing the food. Now, that's not going to eliminate the need for human capital and human resource, uh, but it's certainly going to enhance the experience. Great. And Christo, say, you spoke about uh, what things a franchisor should keep in mind uh, before venturing into this business. Can you yes. uh, share with us on the side of the franchisees, if you have in front of you a group of students or interested people who would like to become franchisees, what advice would you give them? 
Vinny, you know, uh, that's a really great question. And it's something that we have our eye on in every one of our, mm. our brands right now, because the, 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 the youth market, what we've seen certainly through COVID is, as everybody knows, we lost a huge percentage of the labor force. Mm. And a large reason for that is that uh, people realize they want to be in their own businesses. And this is starting um, at the college level now. Um, you, it's why you're seeing SBA and other financial programs start opening up the ability to uh, provide finance models to younger people mm -hmm. that haven't yet been in business because that's where, that's where the future is. Mm -hmm. That is where we are going to grow and where we're going to continue the evolution of, of industry in, in, in this country. And and so, you know, starting out, there's a few things that I would say to any young uh, franchisee, no matter where they are or, or what their circumstance is. Uh, the first one is make sure you have the right team. Make sure yeah. you build a team around you that can provide uh, the service and the, the, uh, the efficiencies and the growth that you're planning for your business. Hmm. Um, the second thing is, I'd say, make sure you get the right advice. You know, mm -hmm. uh, people rush into the franchise business, whether on the franchisee or on the franchisor side, but certainly as a franchisee, make sure you understand the FDD. Make sure you understand what you're buying into, what you're getting. Um, make sure you have passion for what you are about to embark on, because if you're not passionate about it, you're not going to be successful in it. Mm -hmm. I'd say that's the, the single biggest criteria in making a decision as to what franchise you want to be in, is make sure you can be passionate about what you are going to be embarking on each and every day. From the minute you get up in the morning till the time you go to bed at night, your business is going to be the dominant player in your life. Hmm. Uh, more so than your wife or your husband or your kids, you're going to be involved in your business. And so... Uh, making sure you have a passion for what you're doing is really important. And the last aspect I'd say is make sure you're well capitalized yeah. because that 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 ultimately um, can be, we've seen so many businesses fail as a result of and just not being capitalized sufficiently enough. And, um, you know, people have great ideas, people have great businesses, people have all the, the recipe for success, but if they are not able to weather some of the challenges that get thrown at you from a, a just everyday life, um, and, and it happens, you know, yeah. the, the curveball comes, you can have a weather event that shuts you down. I mean, look what happened with us with, with COVID recently. Mm, right. You just don't know where uh, you're going to need uh, resource and, and, and reserves. So make sure you're well capitalized. Hmm. Um, and that's going to set you up not only for your, your entry into your business, but also for your growth going forward. Thank you. Yeah, great, great advice, Christo. And it, it links back to some of the other things you said that I think would be helpful for people. And you mentioned the FDD, which for our audience, you know, the franchise disclosure document. And, and, I, and I love your words about making sure you get the right advice and you're capitalized. Um, franchisees in that, um, right? They're going to have a range the franchisor gives them for what it's going to cost to a unit. But it <laughs> also sounds like you should find out what that is for your local market and plan for some working capital to get to profitability. Is that what you're alluding to a little bit? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Good stuff. And then um, how about talking to other franchisees? Do you think most potential franchisees realize the importance of doing that? Yeah, uh, some do, some yeah. don't. Um, I think, you know, one has to have the ability to decipher uh, the the good, the bad, and the ugly yeah. from from other franchisees. Good you know, point. some some franchisees, you know, the ability for a potential franchisee to analyze what what you know if they're speaking to a a system and they speak to twenty franchisees. They're going to probably get 20 different uh, uh, opinions. You're right. Um, so the ability is, and, and in a, I don't care what franchise system it is, you always have that top tier, middle tier, and bottom tier. Mm -hmm. You're going to get uh, different opinions from each one of those tiers. Uh, have the ability to decipher and, 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 and siphon through the noise that can come from, from that, but absolutely very important to be able to communicate with the franchisees and, and ensure that, 
you know, everything the franchisor has has told you, has sold you on, uh, is 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 coming through the franchise system from their from their mouths. Right. Well, that's great advice because you're right. You know, it's the bottom quartile that you mentioned, they could be just not have done their own homework mm -hmm. or not an entrepreneurial exactly. off or expected it. So I think that's really, really great advice to have the ability to digest out of all of it. So, Vinny, I'll turn it over right. to you yeah. to one of your favorite questions. Yeah, uh, 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 Christo, what, what is it that keeps you, keeps you awake at night uh, when you look at the brands that you currently manage or that you currently own, the franchise brand you currently own? And why so? <laughs> um, Vinny, I'd say, you know, there's, there's, there's so much, I think from an operational perspective, there's a lot that can keep you up at night. But I think the, the thing that keeps me up at night is making sure that I have a handle on where the market is going. Mm -hmm. um, and what are, the, what are the external factors that can affect my business? whether it is interest rate hikes or inflation or you know any of the external areas that can that can have an adverse effect on my business um, and something that I have little control over. So mm -hmm. make sure that I understand where the market is going and where the trends are and then you can you can pivot. I think one of the one of the biggest mistakes that 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 entrepreneurs make today is the the inability to pivot when when those kind of challenges arise and and uh, those that are that that ultimately win the uh win the trophy at the end of the day have that ability to to be able to 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 find where the challenges are and, and find where the, the least path of resistance is in order to to get to the other side of the of the road once those challenges do arise <laughs> Krista, one one last one for me on, on on a topic that we've had some really interesting discussions on. It's the forefront of a lot of things that are going on in our society and the world, which is DEI and diversity, equity, inclusion, and and this intersection with franchising, given the the local impact that a franchise owner has, and also um, the role of the brand. Can you talk a little bit about this intersection and how important it is for a brand to have a mindset around those issues, not only for its customers, the world, but also employees? Are you talking about social impacts? Yes. Uh, hugely, hugely important in today's, uh, in today's world. I think, uh, you know, uh, whether it's in the franchising industry or, or, or business in general, uh, businesses have become very aware of recognizing the importance of implementing social impact and sustainability initiatives mm -hmm. in their business. Um, not only uh, to do their part in creating a better world, uh, but also to appeal to their customer who, yeah. pr who have priority. Customers are demanding this mm -hmm. these days in, 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 in most um, countries around the world for that matter. Right. And I'd say, you know, some franchise companies have started uh, uh, implementing DEI uh, initiatives, uh, creating diversity and inclusion committees within mm -hmm. their own businesses other organizations um, and others have committed to sustainability goals you know yeah. including uh, reducing carbon footprint or sourcing from sustainable uh, suppliers and making sure that the culture that they that they are trying to uh, message to their customer is coming all the way through their brand right um, and I'd say you know in terms of social impact, Many franchises explore ways to give back to the community. Yeah. That's that's one of the bigger uh, areas today where you can you can make a difference is within your own communities where, where your businesses are, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's uh, charitable donations or volunteering or uh, you know supporting local initiatives. Uh, but I think overall, franchise companies that that do prioritize uh, DEI, uh, social impact and sustainability, are likely to benefits benefits with their within their their employee base with their franchisees and mostly with their with their customers so i think it is it is a very important part of business today 
Well, love it because, you know, what you said is so true and maybe not a lot of potential franchisees and entrepreneurs realize that they can leverage the power of those big brands that are making a commitment to do that and maybe yes. ride, ride a little bit yes. for it and use it in their their due diligence and evaluation of the brand. That's great stuff. Vinny, anything else from yeah. your end? No, that, that, that's cool because uh, the one thing, of course, uh, Crystal, uh, we surely look forward to hearing from our guest uh, is uh, – it has to do with uh, if they look back, is there something they would do differently and why? I mean, is there something that they learned that the franchise world taught them that they wish everybody uh, at some point in their life to just uh, keep, uh, uh, keep in mind? Um, Vinny, we don't have enough time for me to go back <laughs> <laughs> Hey, give us one. <laughs> Talk yeah, about yeah. everything <laughs> we, we do differently in our lives. But, but I would say, you know, if I, and, and in the spirit of Babson and, 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 and you know, your, 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 uh, your market and, and who you're trying to appeal to, I would say the most important thing to, and the message I, I try and relay every single day of my life um, is, you know, business is not easy. Business yeah. is tough. Um, there is nothing that's going to give you more satisfaction in your life. Maybe, uh, maybe uh, you know, a, a successful marriage and 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 great kids are the only two things that can give you more satisfaction than 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 starting, growing, building your own business. Hmm. Um, but I would say that you know it is not an easy it is not an easy task like anything in life. Neither is marriage. Neither is bringing up kids. Yeah. Uh, so the message I give to everyone that uh, that I that I uh, I'm involved with on every every single day of my life is never give up, yeah. just never give up. Um, you know, uh, it's 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 a cliche, but it is one of the truest uh, sayings that that any successful entrepreneur can hold on to, uh, because business requires persistence, it requires perseverance. Mm. It requires the willingness to learn, adapt, pivot, listen to where the change is coming and be true to your culture, beliefs, but at the same time, be, have the ability to, to uh, uh, see where the curveball's coming and make the changes that are necessary. And uh, any time you feel like you're down, uh, just know that there's, there's always tomorrow. And, hmm. and at some point in time, if you, if you just hold on and, and don't give up, Things change and wow. things happen for the for the better. This is awesome. That's incredible. And what what great words and you know some entrepreneurs and you're alluding to too have, have mentioned that their businesses are kind of like their babies and and the partnerships you talked about. Yes. So you're right. It's, it, there's a lot of similarities. Well, you know, Christo, just we, we're really really grateful for your time today and 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 for our collaboration and for all the lessons and you epitomize a lot of what we talk about here at Babson and the spirit of entrepreneurship and authentic leadership and pivoting right and taking action so we we look forward to learning more and seeing from a little bit afar and somewhat close hopefully some of these brands and how they grow and you're able to scale because we love scaling here and and so much thanks to you and best wishes yeah, thank you so much, uh, Ab, and we look forward to working with uh, with you and with Babson and uh, whatever we can do to help and and uh, help you achieve what you guys want to do. Uh, just let us know. But it was an absolute pleasure, Vinny. It was an absolute pleasure meeting with you. And thank you. Uh, hope to hope to see you guys soon. Hey, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you so much, hey, Christo. Thanks, Christo. You got it. Thank Cheers. you. But hey, Christo. Uh, so what yes. happened? What happened to Yanis at the <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Listen, you know, I have a I have a love rate, a love hate relationship with him. He he beat our sons two years yeah. ago, uh, but at the same time, he's, he's Greek, and I love everything about him. So, <laughs> I, 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 I sometimes have this. Uh, I don't know who to support. Kind of, I'm in that mode. But the sons, the sons, that the, the, the sons, uh, who who are the sons meeting next, right? They they, they 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 play game two tonight with the Denver Nuggets. They lost game one. So, okay. Uh, 
we uh, watch watch them come back here tonight. Hopefully. Okay. Good okay. Stuff. Good well, we stuff. had a great call last week, and I I had to bite my tongue. I don't know if I've told Vinny, but we had a great call last week with Omar Simmons. Yeah. Omar's and he good. mentioned, oh yeah, we did yeah. a recent investment. So I, you know, I was biting my tongue that you know, we had that connection. Yeah. So anyway, he was great, and, and we we were yeah, fantastic, yeah. fantastic guy. And congrats Love on that, and, and I'll talk to you soon. All right, my friend. All right, guys. Thank you, Christos. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Be well. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Stars of Franchising. Stars of Franchising was produced at Babson College, engineered by Travis Gray. Karen Soa is our guest coordinator and music by Ralph Taylor. If you like Stars of Franchising, be sure to review us wherever you get your podcasts and spread the word and share these stories any way you can. <laughs>